Om Ajnana Kimandasya Chinan Chana Shalaka Chakshur Mitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gobe Nama Chichetaya Manopistam Staptam Yena Bhutalishvam Upkadam Yam Dadatishvam Panantikam Bandeham Shiyo Shiyo Dapad Kamlam Shiyo Mbaishnavam Shum Shri Upam Jagajatam Sakana Ragna Tam 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 Sajivan Sampaitam Savutam Pachana Saitam Si Krishna Chitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sakana Lita Shiksha Tam Vitam Shum He Krishna Guna Sinudina Bandhati Atpate Gopre Shakopka Kanta Rande Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchna Gaunga Gira Deva Indavanashwe Vishwana Siddha Deva Ipanama Maharipaya Pankha Kalta Vishya Kripasana Vaivsha Patiham Papana Vyo Vaisna Vyo Namonama Gaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Tiyatvaita Kata Dakshi Vasti Gaunga Bhakta Bhuna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Aryam, Aryam, Ram, Ram, Aryam, Aryam. Namo Vishnaptai Krishna Vistai Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Shanti Namo. Namaste Sarishwata Deva Gaurvani Pachayani. Nirvishesha Srinivadi Patkatyayi Dasatayi. Shila Prabhupada Ki. So this morning I would like to speak on the thematic thematic analysis analysis of the Bhagavad Gita. That, uh, but before we are going into this, I would like to point your attention to the following. So this first, which we see here on the screen. Conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. Serve the man preacher, man, counsel, man, 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 process of Jnana Yoga and Astanka Yoga. But the both, especially Jnana Yoga, they have the objective to merge with the impersonal Brahman, mostly does their objective. And the yogis, they are, they want to realize the super soul, that's true. That's the real purpose. But mostly they want also to merge, to merge with the impersonal Brahman. That, uh, so they want to become God. But that's a cheating process. We can only go back to Godhead if we develop Bhakti. Unless you go back to Godhead, there is no stopping of the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. Temporarily, you may go into, Brahma, into the Brahma Jyoti, but you have to come back because the soul wants activity. It's not natural because this uh, merging is uh, an imagination that... Uh, so this is where the Bhagavad Gita ends. It Krishna condemns this cheating religion and you and you say you just surrender to me, go to bhakti, do what I instructed. Man manabab mad bhakto masimam namaskar. That uh, but now interesting is if we go to the Bhagavatam and we read the second verse, the second verse. 
Dharma Pachita Kaivata Paramonia Matsaram Satam Vityam Vastamanatha Vastu Sivatam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Simad Bhagavate Ma Munekate Kim Papar Ishvara Satyarita Vrutyate Trakiti Bisu Sruch Sivitat Ksanat The Dharma Pachita Kaitabo That's uh, completely Rejecting all called of also called re religios re religiosity covered by fruitive intention. Fruitive, they have to something. They have something to achieve. Like the impersonalists, they have something to achieve. They want to become God. That's quite fruitive. So. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are mat materially motivated. So the Bhagavatam starts where the Bhagavad Gita ends. Krishna says, I reject this. And the Bhagavatam says, I reject this materially motivated religion. That it's understandable by those devotees who are few, fully pure in heart. The same Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, only, and Prabhupada in the purport, only devotees can understand Bhagavad Gita. That's all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion. For the welfare of all such to up, truth approaches the threefold misery. That uh, this Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasana is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of the Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Lord is established within his heart. That, uh, so that is the process. After hearing Bhagavad Gita, we must study Bhagavatam. That then we can that will help us to realize the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. We will see in the in the Bhagavatam, practically in every purport, Prabhupada refers to verse from Bhagavad Gita. Constantly. That so this is the practice of Bhagavad Gita. That is this it's is the histories of devotees, who be, how they became purified, which obstacles they uh they uh, conquered that uh, it's the Bhagavatam shows how the how the uh, Krishna is connected to the creation with everything, always in everything, every atom, in de detail described. And moreover, in the eleventh canto. Krishna speaks Udav Gita. It's again another Bhagavad Gita mm -hmm. in the Bhagavatam. And with much more details. That, uh, so our practice is the chanting of the holy name. Yes. But to chant his holy name, you must have the proper inner attitude. That is from Shikshastika and verse 3 and 4, the appropriate inner attitude. And that inner attitude will help you to overcome offenses. By study of the Bhagavatam, you develop this appropriate inner attitude and your chanting will increase. The, the quality of your chanting will improve. But, uh, so they are interdependent practically. Oh, the holy name is, in, is independent. Yes, that's right. But uh, the, the potency of the holy name we cannot experience when our heart is not pure. And if we don't have the proper the, the proper attitude, 
we will not experience it. So the, these two have to go together. So when you have studied Bhagavad Gita, you need to study Bhagavata to bring it in practice. That's very important. Bhagavad Gita alone is not sufficient. To understand the, the deep importance of Bhagavad Gita, you study the Bhagavad. Therefore, Prabhupada has established that as a part of our daily uh, daily sadhana. Now, rejecting this cheating religion that uh, so we have of course it's very important for us that we know how to defeat impersonalism that uh, so what are their beliefs they think they can merge with the absolute truth. They think their consciousness is and um, this individuality is a temporary manifestation, but once we merge again, that's gone. That's uh, that's what they think. And uh, so the the soul loses its individuality and become one with God. The soul merges, does not exist anymore as a part and parcel, but uh, it merges and they get cosmic consciousness of whatever they imagine. The second thing, uh, the second uh, point is that they think there's only Brahman. They Vaikuntha and the spiritual world, these are stories. That, uh, that's not factual. That, uh, no, only Brahman is supreme. And, but they use Bhagavad Gita as their basis, and with, with world, world circulary, they change the meet, mean, meetings, meanings. But if they change the mean, meaning of one verse, they must also struggle to change the meaning of other verses, but it distorts the quintessence, essence, the logical flow in the Gita. It distorts that. And uh, as Bhakti Shastri students, you must be able to counteract all these arguments. And the first verse we will discuss how part makes that clear in the second chapter, verse 12, I think. Not Fabam Chatuna Shamnat from Name Chanati Pana Shivana Vavishma Sharpa Vayamatapa. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So Krishna says here, we are eternally individuals. We were individuals in the past, individuals now, and we will never cease to be individuals in the future. That uh, the impersonalist says, Krishna speaks here uh, conventionally about the body. That, uh, but that doesn't make sense. In the previous verse, Krishna said that uh, by speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the deaf, because we are the soul. So Krishna rejects the bodily conception of life. And now he, he will something say something different in the next verse. It's nonsense. That, uh, so that is the first 
this. And then, of course, then uh, in further Nainam sindanti shastrani, nainam dati papaka, nachinam kledianti apu naso sasati maguta. The soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. Cannot be pieced, cut to pieces by any weapon. In the next verse, ashediyam adayyam, Akleda Soseva Sanitya Savakatastana Achalyam Sanatana. The individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burnt nor dried, is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeless, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. So the soul remains eternally the same. It cannot be merged, merging with something and disappear. It cannot be cut to pieces. Not possible. So merging is not possible. That merging means they, they are situated in Brahman, but they are still an individual. That uh, you cannot change that. That's the dharma of the that's the dharma of the spirit soul. It's an individual, eternally. But, um, so these are references from the second chapter. That, um, and now we go to the seventh chapter of the Gita. Avyaktam vyakti napanam manyate mama buddhaya prambha vamajanato mama vyan anuttanam. An intelligent man who do not know me perfectly think that I, the supreme personality of God, it was impersonal before and have now assumed this personality. Due to their small knowledge, they do not my higher nature, which is imperishable and supreme. That's quite uh, direct. That's quite direct. Krishna says, yeah, I was never impersonal before. So they think the personal is supreme. And Krishna, he is a manifestation of the modes of nature. In goodness or what, but is a manifestation of the modes of nature. That, uh, but higher is Brahman, but Krishna says, no, he, 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 he said before that uh, nobody can excel me in this world, that uh, nobody, nobody is higher than me. That, uh, so, yes, I think it's seven. Yeah, it's seven seven. Mata Patramna Nyat Kinshidasti Dananja Mayasya Vamidam Putam Sutramana Maniganaiva. A conquer of Philip, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls as string on its on a thread. Seven seven. And then fourteen twenty seven. Brahmano Ipatishtanam, Krishna says. The Brahman is subordinate to me. He very clearly says it. That uh, that's so. This is the direct meaning. The the impersonalist will will have to come up with indirect meanings. That uh, that's yes. 
27. 27. Then four, yeah. And then two verses further. Vedam samatitani vartamana nani sarana bhavishan sabutani mantu veda nakachana. O oh, Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of God, that I know everything that has happened in the past and all that is happening in the present and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but no one knows. But me, no one knows. Yeah. In the purport. Here the question of personality and impersonality is clearly stated. If the form of the Supreme Personality of God that were Maya or material, like the impersonalist says, they, then the living entity, it would change its body and forget everything about its past life. Then, like the living entity, Krishna would forget. Anyone with a material body cannot remember his past life. So Krishna's body is not made of material energy. Otherwise, he cannot remember all these things. That, um, and then we have 8.15. After attaining me, the great souls, while yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they obtained the highest perfection. That uh, hmm. after attaining me, Krishna says, the yogis do not return. That uh, it's, it's not after attaining Brahman, it's after attaining Krishna. That uh, so. Because they don't believe in the spiritual world, but yeah, that's the problem with the impersonalist. Then the next verse I want to discuss on that is the ninth chapter. Timpuna Bamana Punya Bhaktaracha Seastata Nityamaskam Lukam Imam Papya Bayasyamam. How much more this is so of the righteous Brahmans, the, the devotees and the saintly kings. Therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engaged in service to me. That uh, yeah. This world is declared by the Supreme Personality of God to be temporary and full of miseries. So philosophers, especially Mayavadi philosophers, say that this world is false. But we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the world is not false, but temporary. There is a difference between temporary and false. That is another fallacy of the uh, impersonalists. They say a material world is false, it's illusion. That, but it's not illusion. It's temporary. And to take something temporary as permanent, that's illusion. But it's not illusion. That, uh, and then we have the next. Of course, then we have in the 10 8, of course. I'm the source of all the spiritual and material worlds. So there are spiritual worlds, Krishna says. Everything emanates from me. 
the wise will perfectly know this, engage in my devotional service, and worship me with all their hearts. That uh, spiritual walls. That uh, so yes. That's then eight. Of course, then in the twelfth chapter, there it's very clear. The summit makes it very clear. Yeah. Maya Pesha Manoya Mam Nitya Yukta Pasti Shadya Payopi Tasti Me Yukta Tamamatam. Supreme Personality of God had said, those who fix their mind on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. So those who worship his personal form are superior, Krishna says. And then, yeah, this is the process of the impersonals. But those who worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the sense, the all-pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal, impersonal conception of the absolute truth by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone. Such person engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. That uh, this here says this impersonalist, yeah, when they come to the point of uh, realizing Brahman, they understand that, uh, yeah, they will progress to the next stage and finally come to worshiping Krishna. Of course, that's not for the Mayavadis. This is for the bona fide impersonalist, the Brahmavadis. The Brahmavadis, they don't think that the world is impersonal. That uh, they, 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 so they, they don't think, sorry, that the world is illusion. No, that uh, they also don't think Krishna is illusion. They just say Brahman is supreme and Krishna, they are, they are not sure about this position. Higher or lower, lower. So there are doubts, but they are moving on the. These are the Brahmavadis. Yes? I just said the Brahmavadis, they don't know what is supreme. That, uh, and I, I told the story last time of uh, Brihamuni. On behalf of sages, they came together and they wanted to know who is supreme, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, or Lord Brahma. So they asked Prayamuni to do a test. <laughs> so, and uh, Prayamuni was the son of Brahma, he went to Brahma, but he just went in without offering up obeisances, and immediately Brahma became angry. So he concluded he cannot be the supreme, he becomes angry. And then he went to Lord Shiva. He went to Lord Shiva, and he, uh, Lord Shiva, because it's his brother, Lord Shiva wanted to embrace him. But, but William Moon said, no, I don't want you to embrace me. You are living on, on a crematorium and all these ashes are, are on you. You are dirty. No. And immediately Lord Shiva became angry and but he, he wanted to uh, attack him. But Parvati prayed to him, please, it's your brother. That, that it's... And, and then he went to spit out with see Lord Vishnu. And, Lord Vish and, and when he came to Lord Vishnu, Prihamuni immediately put his feet on the breast of Krishna, very hard. And, and Lord Vishnu sa said, oh, I hope you didn't hurt your feet. My breast is so hard. But 
But, but of course, Lakshmi was disturbed by that. And therefore, since that time, all the Brahmins are poor. <laughs> anyway, but the point is there that uh, they are not sure who is supreme. And most of them think Brahman is supreme. But, but they are not saying that Krishna is is made of material energy or or uh, that uh, yeah so they are not avajananti mamuda manusham tamin ashrita they don't see krishna as an ordinary person they see him as transcendental but they are not sure what is supreme brahman or krishna does krishna comes from brahman or from brahman from krishna they are unsure. That's the point. Is that clarifying what the Brahma Bad is? Okay. Yes, sir. Why did Bhimpu Vishnu on the chest? To test him if he would become angry. If he was trying to provoke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To see if he, if he would be controlled. That... It's a very uh, uh, a amazing way to test something. Yeah, sure. He, that that uh, he was uh, chosen by that committee of three the, of the sages. <laughs> but but uh, I would not accept that mission. But he accepted quite. Uh, uh, yeah. But Lord Vishnu takes this as a great symbol of his quality of personal worship because he is distinguished from other Vishnu from. By Prabhu Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, the impersonalist that uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, we were here. Of course, he further, further in the 12th chapter, it said, Klesha Dikatrasti Samabhyakta Shakta Sage Samabhyakta. Avyakti igatir to come the other pair of apyantin. For those whose mind are attached to the unmanifest impersonal feature of the supreme advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. So better not to do it, this impersonal path. And then Krishna's, Krishna describes how he, in the next verse, how is the personally the swift deliverer of the devotees. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me, being devoted to me without aviation, engaged in devotion service, and always meditating on me, these are having fixed their minds on me. So these are the devotees. Osuna Prita, for them, I'm the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. So they will get relief from birth and death. He does not say that from the impersonalist. That, uh, yeah. Are the, same? It, the Brahma Bhad is, is one kind of imper impersonalist. What is the other? Maya Bhad. Yeah. That these are the bad guys. <laughs> Brahma Bhad is they believe in Pancho Pasna That's I'm not sure. I think this is more Mayavadi because Maya. because they they worship these five deities mm -hmm. and and then at the end when they reach liberation they put their feet on it and away with that that uh, we don't need it anymore. That's quite offensive. Anyway, that uh, then of course fourteen twenty seven that. Uh, that's very clear. That's really a, different verses. They have problems with this. Yeah, but they, they must struggle with all words circularly trying to find another meaning. Pramani Patistanem Amritas Pasya Ya An Amritasya Bayasya Sa Satsvatasya Sadharmasya Sukasya Kantkasya Sa. I'm the base of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, eternal. And it's the con constitutional position of ultimate happiness. So Krishna says here, Brahman comes from me, it's subordinate. In the Shiva Upanishads, you will learn that Brahman is the all the of 
Krishna, coming from his body and his planet, Krishna Loka, all these have thousands. And that's that everywhere. That uh, so yeah, I think of course is one more I want to mention to finish. And that's also an important one. Fifteen seven. Mamai van se chipelo ki, chiva buta sanatan, mana sustenindria ni pragatistani karsati. Living entities in this material world are my eternal fragmental part. Due to condition life, they are struggling very hard with the senses, which include the mind. Now, in the verse, it said this word sanatana. They are eternally my separated parts, eternally, cannot change. It's that word sanatan. That's the problem for the impersonalist. Eternal. Anyway, these are some of the ways to uh, yeah to defeat impersonalism, especially the Mayavadi impersonalism from Bhagavad Gita. So, are there any questions on that? Yes. How to convert a Mayavadi into a devotee? Unless you are Lord Chaitanya, don't try it. <laughs> they are offensive. We don't preach to them. No, they are envious of Krishna because they say Krishna does not exist. They want Krishna out of the picture. It's I say Krishna is Maya, but interesting they are saying Krishna is from its material energy, it's Maya. So why then are they commenting of on a dialogue between Krishna and Arjun? If Krishna is Maya and Arjun is Maya, so what's the use of their talk? That if the one is not the spiritual master and the other and the, and the other the disciple, there's no instructor and is in, in, in the one who is instructed. It doesn't make sense. That uh, Prabhupada used that argument also. Yes. It, there are different forms of atheism that. Uh, you have atheists who, are, who have no interest in God. But, uh, but Mayavadis are worse. Yeah, they want to kill Krishna. They want to kill Krishna. They want Krishna out of the picture. That, uh, and that is also the Maya, Maya Paritajyan, mostly impersonalist, or, or also uh, secular. Uh, scientists, they everywhere, they, every every time in science, they don't get consider. They don't want to consider anything metaphysical. From the moment that comes in the picture, they say it's stories. That, uh, but yes, the metaphysical is there for to explain things we cannot explain. From the from the phenomenal world out. Yes, no. In, in, in the text. Yeah, yeah you, you say. Yeah, you have the mic. Just. Thank you, Sinas. Um, uh, the yogi is who go there and then come back to say, right? Uh, so let's see why is it, um, Krishna is the new one? Yogis instead of Bhakta. Yeah, why did Krishna? Bhakta. Krishna said the person, uh, yogis who will go to this spiritual world never, again never come back, right? In this material world. Yeah. It's, but because I saw some letters of the yogis and uh, uh, so many platforms are there. So I think uh, Bhakta is top from the everything. 
Yogis. It's seven, it's very clear. It speaks about the yogis in Bhagavad Gita. And at the time of death, they can get their destination. A destination in this world. Their destination is not Vaikuntha. It's in this world or it is the Brahma Jyoti. Unless they, they are yoginam, apisarvasam, matkhanam, trachanam, bachitam, bachateyamam. Yeah, yoginam, apisarvasam, matkhanam, trachanam, shadava, bachateyamam, tame yukta tame mudha. The highest yogi is one who is united in love with me in the heart. So the yogi who meditates on Krishna in the heart and develops love for him, that he becomes a bhakti yoga. He can go to the spiritual world. That kind of yoga can. So it's one of the four practices for the ages. In Satya Yoga, that was the, the method to meditate on Krishna within the heart and develop love for him. And then they went back to the spiritual world. That was the method for Satya Yoga. Now they cannot do it. But these yogis are bhakti yogis who go to the spiritual world through the process of Astanga Yoga. It's possible, very difficult, not for this age. Good. Hmm. And that uh, what I consider that is no meaning. That, uh, but Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, these them God worshippers are less intelligent. They are cons concerned with material benefit. Benefit. That the Mayavad is impersonalist. They are concerned with liberation, but that's not their concern. Then God worships, worshippers, they want material wealth and comfort in this material world, and they are not even spiritualists, they are just materialists. You, you had also? Yeah, I'm just making comments on what you said. Yep. About, you know, the scientists and those people who do not believe in any supernatural. In fact, in the textbook of physiology, the introduction it is written that there is nothing supernatural about life and everything can be explained on this of chemistry and matter. That's what they write in the textbook of physiology. And, uh, you know, uh, I once attended a biochemistry lecture and they were explaining something about PCA cycle, tricarbonic acid cycle, how energy is produced out of glucose particles. And in that sequence, there are so many points where you meet, there are some selections of enzymes and such kind of uh, radicals and all that. And that they say it is automatic. Automatic, yeah. So uh, you, that cannot happen. It can happen once or twice, but how can a sequence of events take like that without some interaction? Aut automatic fools. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay, my that last question because I have to stop. I mentioned that uh, this person is going after merging, it can come back. So, um, we, we know the birth cycle, they come back for karma. Now, once they merge, there is no purpose. How they will come back? I, I explained it a few times. Shilpa Pat explains that in the verse. From Bhagavatam, the near of Indakshri Muktamanas, first of all, Baba Abhasuddha Buddhaya, Aruna Kachena Pampatam Pata, Potantia de Yate de Yusma Angraya. Yeah, sorry. So they, um, they are merging, thinking they are merging. First, they are not merging. They are situated in Brahman, but they retain their individuality. And it is the quality of the, 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 the soul by nature as desires. We cannot be, be without desire. That a soul wants relationships, wants activity. And they are there 
in the Bama Jyoti, and it feels good after ten thousands, millions of births, peace, and feeling feeling peaceful, uh, a feeling of satisfaction feels good. But after a few ten thousand of years, it becomes boring. Nothing to do here. And they cannot go to the spiritual world because you need bhakti for that, and they don't believe in Krishna. So they fall back just because they desire activities again. And the Prabhupada said they are like Sputnik. They sent Sputnik, that was like it at that time. The Russians, the first thing around around the Earth, the Sputnik, it goes up, it makes orbit, but finally it has to come back. And so, that's it. Good. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Jai Prabhupada, Hare Bhava.